hello, it's Amanda here from Suddenly Autistic and in this video I want to talk about what I've been um, working through um, in terms of understanding how my mind and my body are working together. Um, so as somebody who's, who's recently um, completed the diagnostic process for autism, um, it's a final recognition that, you know, you don't know, I'm going to tell, tell you, it's a final recognition that the way I experience the world is, is different to the majority of people, not to everybody, but to the majority. So um, all of the things that I've done up to now, which is, you know, see what's, I suppose the first thing you start to do in life is look what other people do and then copy them or, you know, adapt it to yourself or reject it, whatever you do. But you're looking to other people and you're either accepting it, rejecting it or changing it. Um, and, and I mean, to a great degree, that's what I've done forever up until this point. But um, it hasn't worked very well for me. And now I know why it's because of the autism and how that affects my whole being. So in terms of the, the body mind connection, this whole um, slight, you know, different way of being wired and experienced in the world really plays out in this body mind connection because I had um, we don't know how other people experience the world. I mean, that's that's a fact for everybody. You just don't really know. You know what they tell you, but do they tell you everything? How do you really know how it feels? Are they using words that you wouldn't describe it that way? That kind of thing. Um, but basically, I was of the opinion until fairly recently in doing some work with a somatic um, coach and also my, um, my therapist, um, who also was part of my diagnostic process and looking at, um, you know, things like how I've experienced the world, the traumas that go on, all that kind of thing. But the somatic therapy is, um, is very much focused on um, f how feelings travel through the body. Now, I would have been inclined probably before now to think that... Um, everything can be rationalised through the brain, if you like. So if, you, if not that I have been going around the world thinking that the body and the brain are separate entities and you've got the head over here and the body over there and never the twain shall meet. I mean, I'm completely aware that we're one being and that all these things matter, but I hadn't quite appreciated how you can't think your way out of everything or you think your way through rather everything. So I had overly relied on that and then not necessarily appreciated the knock-on effects that things have had for my body. So, for example, you know, whether it be eating the wrong thing or eating on a schedule or foods that don't necessarily agree with me in the way that I prefer to be, um, or anxiety from a work situation or a social situation or an overthinking situation, whatever, whatever it would be. So it might be mentally anxiety, it might be physical intolerance, it might be discomfort at the weather, it could be anything. Now, what I'd, what I'd thought up until recently is that, you know, once I've become aware, oh, I'm feeling distressed, something's going wrong here, I can scan myself and, you know, and think, oh, well, it's anxiety, it's stress, I'm overthinking, I'm doing blah, and then you know, make a little list or do something and think it through. What I've become aware of um, recently is that this thing, this idea that the body keeps the score, now, The Body Keeps the Score is the name of a book that some chap wrote about trauma, which um, the title is a really good one. I really like it. It resonates with me. It's going around my head a lot. Um, I listened to the chap, and I can't remember his name. I listened to half of his lecture, and it kind of turned me off a bit, probably because he went off on tangents that I didn't really follow or think were relevant, so it kind of made me a bit annoyed with him. A bit unfair, because I, I take it that this guy's got a lot to say, but it doesn't matter because what happens with me is that the idea is enough to then set in process a self-discovery and then adopt it to what works for me. So this idea that the body keeps the score. So it made me think and along with my somatic therapy and my regular therapy and uh, me noticing my body more and my brain and how I have resolved thoughts in my head but my body is still some days behind or requires something different from me that's new for me that's new so um what this whole idea of the body keeping the score as far as I am I'm aware of it is exactly that that you can't think yourself through or out of every situation that things are happening feelings processes in the body that are affected by the mind but that need to be um released or, or gone through through the body so they come in through the body they need to go out through the body or almost if you like now um 
at risk of this sounding all very confusing and abstract. It's like the other day, I had a very stressful situation um, with um, some conversations in the family and things that were going on, and it was really um, affecting my mind and how I was feeling. But I resolved the feelings in my mind, um, you know, and, and came up with a plan, and, and we came up with a plan in therapy, and I was really happy mentally. So I didn't feel the mental distress anymore as to what was going on. And a lot of what's going on is, is a consequence of the change in our family with my diagnosis and, you know, situations changing, kids growing up, that kind of thing. Anyway, so there was me then feeling quite happy that my mental burden had lifted. But then I woke up the next day um, with what can only be described as a bit of the jiggles or energy or dis you know uh, just not quite comfortable in my body not quite right um and so it was almost like the the thing that was in my brain like these thoughts that were wishing around now they'd gone into some kind of filing cabinet or list of order and stuff that i could action but my body was still hanging on to some kind of chaos anyway long story short i didn't do too much about it on that day because i had other things to do but then the next day i took myself off on a very long and very hard bush walk so i did 22k at a blistering pace um, didn't get blisters which was kind of good good shoes um, but anyway i felt sick afterwards because i pushed myself so far but it was what i needed so what i what i um the only way i can describe this based on my experience is that like I said, up until very recently, I hadn't realised that the body keeps the score. And like I said, this might not be what the guy's talking about in his trauma thing. It doesn't have to be even trauma, I think. It's just feelings. But what I'm realising from my lived experience and day to day, as I'm becoming aware of myself as a whole person and my reality being quite different to other people's and, and all the rest of it, I'm having to consciously check on things that other people might take for granted or not even think about. And I'm noticing that it's true that I can't think my way out of everything, that even though my mind might be less anxious and that I'm feeling calm and whatever in my head, my body requires something more of me. I can't just think and then sit down and read a book, you know. And in some situations, what I'm finding is that physical hard work um, or movement, endurance, pace, especially the rhythmic notion of um, or action of walking is very, very useful for me personally to get some of that um, like trapped or blocked energy, I suppose. I don't know how to call it, what to call it, but that out of my body. So to finish the process of thinking. So I think what I'm realizing for me is that um, my natural tendency is still to think so and to overthink if you like so to to think of all the different ways that i can solve something or work through something do a lot of work that way but the missing part of the puzzle is the physical so i should never i'm learning that i should never never um just feel like i've resolved something through my mind that i always need to make room and time to process it through my body whether that's through a long fast walk or a short jump on a trampoline or some archery which I like doing or drumming or whatever so it doesn't have to be you know a punishment thing but when there's very big emotions and very big pains or very big stuck mental issues I think for me, I do need to go and, you know, not punish myself. I didn't see the walk I did as a punishment. It was very, very, very enjoyable and it wasn't painful doing it. What it was is meditative, rhythmical, endurance walking at a very good pace for, for a prolonged period of time, over three hours. And that seemed to give me my body the calm. Sorry, there's a mosquito the calm that it needed to say, you know what, love, you've done it. You've got through that. Now you can move on to the next thing. So look, I just thought that was quite interesting because um, logically I couldn't work it out. But now I'm like, yeah, maybe it does make sense. It's all in an energy. It's just trapped. But it seems almost too literal to be true, but it kind of is working. <laughs> so I'm going to go with it. So I wanted to share that. There you go. Thank you.